Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and today we are back with another dun dun dun. Woo! Okay, Dan Dan's on top of it because I'm not even matching the freaking food. <laughs> and no, this is not being filmed on St. Patrick's Day a bajillion years ago. I don't know why I didn't do this idea for St. Patrick's Day. That was a fault on me. Yeah. This is some basil tteokbokki pasta sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know it's gonna taste good, but right now it looks a little bit questionable. I, I just feel like it needs to be red. So we've got sausages, rice cakes, big rice cakes, bacon, all of this delicious creamy basil sauce. Then on this side, we've got these mini Korean <laughs> cheese corn dogs. These spicy, um, they're supposed to be a little bit flavored, spicy seaweed rolls that have been fried, mm. spicy chicken donggrang things. And with that being said, imagine Dan Dan. I give you this whole spread, right? Mm -hmm. And I say, all you can eat out of this, this entire spread right in front of you, is this tiny little bowl of ketchup. Would you be upset with me? Would you not think, well, that's kind of rude. I thought we were cousins. I thought you loved me. All he can eat is ketchup? Just the ketchup. Could you do it? <laughs> no. I mean, it's a little bit weird, right? I mean, you would be upset. You would feel like you're getting ripped off. Like, why is everybody else eating the tteokbokki? Yeah. But not me. What about the freaking mustard, okay? Well, that's what watching Netflix without ExpressVPN is like. Sure, you get to watch whatever is in the US library or wherever you are, but did you know so many other other countries have shows, movies on Netflix that you don't have access to. And with ExpressVPN, with the same Netflix subscription, you can start watching them too. No, really, you can. I switched my ExpressVPN over to Spain and I recently watched A Hard Day. And you guys know I've watched a bajillion thrillers in my lifetime, but this, if you wanna watch one that you are not bored for even two seconds, this is the one for you. And then there's this movie called Extreme Job that if you switch over to South Korea on your ExpressVPN, it's like a comedy action thriller and it's probably one of the funnier ones that I've seen in a really long time. That's not even the main reason why I use ExpressVPN though, okay? I use it on every single device because I am actually pretty proactive on my internet security. Have you guys watched Social Dilemma yet on Netflix? So, I mean, it's about how every time you search something on the internet, big tech companies can mine your data. They track your searches, your messages, your video history. It's honestly so freaking creepy. You are being watched on the internet exponentially more than you actually think. I just want to feel a little bit safer and a little bit more protected on the internet and I'm gonna do whatever I can. And if that sounds like super secret hacker stuff and why would you be affected, every single person is. Even in the US, it's completely legal for your internet service provider to sell your data to ad companies. No, 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 no. I mean, I don't know about you, but like what's the craziest thing you've ever searched? We don't wanna know. Some things you should just keep private to yourself, yeah? This is one of those things. So how does it work? On your end, you just click a button on ExpressVPN and ExpressVPN does all of the work. You know how every device has a unique IP address? Well, when you use ExpressVPN, your connection gets rerouted through one of their 3,000 servers and it hides your real IP address and replaces it with one of their own. They've got servers in over 94 different countries so you could appear to be from any of them. And all your data goes through this secure encrypted tunnel and cannot be seen by hackers, by your internet service provider, not even by ExpressVPN themselves. So do it for you, but also do it for the elevated Netflix and chill night. And if you guys go to expressvpn.com slash biz, you can find out how you can get three months free. That's expressvpn.com slash biz. And thank you ExpressVPN for sponsoring today's video and let's get into the food. All right, what are we starting with? I guess... I'm gonna go with sausage. Oh, me too. I love a good sausage, and I, I can really taste the sauce, you know? Wow. Is that... <laughs> it's actually good. Mm. Mm, that's good. It's creamy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I thought the green stuff would not be good. It's really good. It's basil-y. It's creamy. Bacon with it's the good. talk. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. try it. So good. It's almost like an alfredo, but imagine mm -hmm. with a lot of basil, right? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm. Mm. Fish cake. I love bacon, but bacon does not love me. <laughs> okay. I like bacon when it's soft. Oh, me too. I feel like most people like it crispy. They like it hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Let's try the corn dog. Mm. 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 It's so good. It's so good. You good, bro? Mm -hmm. What? But it's a cheese ball. Oh, 
Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Isn't it good? Mmm. Mmm. It's like a cheese lollipop. Okay, these are the seaweed rolls. I'm gonna do something weird and dip them in mustard. Hey, look at this, Bruh. guys. What? Mmm. Listen, why am I just moaning at everything right now? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's good. That's when mm -hmm. you know it's good. When you have no thoughts, you know? Up in here, it's just good vibes and good food. <laughs> mm. You have inspired me. Wow, Amazing. that's huge. Guess what we're doing today? No. Confessions! Confessions! <laughs> the last one was crazy. Yeah, it was insane. There were so many parts where I, I feel like you guys live crazy lives, and I keep wanting to read them, and I'm like, no, I need to save it because I want to get my reaction on camera, you know? I want to... I don't want to dwell on it. Ooh, should I leave the Google Docs? I'm gonna leave the Google Docs linked in the description. It's not a Google Docs, I don't know what it is. It's like one of those, ask me a question, you know, Google things. Please leave your confession below. <laughs> so these are all your confessions. This is not Reddit. This is not no random bits that we don't know from down the block. This is your confession that we're reading right now. <laughs> I have my iPad because, again, I'm reading it literally with you, same time. I need wow. one last bite of this tteokbokki. It's actually so delicious. You like the duck more or the fish cake? I like the duck more today. Wow. Isn't that weird? How about you? I like I... the duck. I like the fish cake. Mm. Oh my gosh. Mm -mm -mm. Can I get some donglang thing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't believe he knew what that was. I can't believe you never. And had I that. didn't. He loves some grand thing. It's like a spicy chicken patty, but sometimes it's, like it's Korean made of beef. chicken nugget. Mm -hmm. And but I didn't know that, bruh, bruh. Not only did he not know that, he thought we were making it up. <laughs> he thought because it's called tonggran thing, which the actual translation is round thing. So he was like, "But what's it actually called?" And I'm like, "The round thing." And he's like, "No, what's it fucking actually called?" I thought you were trolling. Mm mm. Mm -hmm. Come on, Dana. Mmm. Wow. Okay. Mmm. Wow. Mmm. Mm. Insanity. It feels kind of healthy. Because it's green, it's like a salad. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like I'm eating vegetables only. It's like a green juice. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a green smoothie. Exactly. Well, actually, it's a cleanse, you know? <laughs> I like it. Okay, last bite. I'm sorry. First confession. I've been with my fiance for nine years now. He started balding a few years ago and I'm a bitch and I like to give him shit for it. Every time he pisses me off, I sign up for the Bosley Hairless mailing list and I give them his phone number and our address. To this day, he is still perplexed as to why he gets a million Bosley mailers and phone calls. That's how often he annoys me. What's Bosley? That's it? Yeah. Oh. It's like a Bosley is, I'm sure it's like one of those hair loss companies, hair transplant companies, <laughs> hair growth serum companies, you know what I mean? For guys, probably. And he's trying to get it every time. Oh, he doesn't want it. Yeah, she's annoying him. Mm -hmm. It's like spam calls. Bro, why do I get so many spam calls in a day? You it's all of us. Yeah, I guess sometimes too. Sometimes? Yeah. I get sometimes. like 20 a day. 20 a day? Yeah. What are, what are you... Honey, what are you doing? Have you ever picked them up and they're like, it's like the Chanel store? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and then it's an ad. <laughs> I have to be a little bit sensitive to this one because Dan Dan's here. What if you just got a bunch of hair transplant mailers, right? Actually, I'll be super annoyed. I just have a question. I'm, I'm thinking, sorry. I'm thinking. I know. No, no, no. I just have a question though. Yeah. This is really random. So let's say you're dating this girl and she's like your soulmate. She's the love of your life, or at least you think so. Like you guys get along, everything's perfect. And suddenly every time that you go on the internet, Everything is like an engagement ring ad. <laughs> you know, your YouTube ad is like an engagement ring ad. You go onto Reddit, you get these engagement ring ads. Just fucking engagement rings everywhere. Do you feel like that's, you know, something giving you a sign to propose? Like, what's the vibe? And we share the same laptop, right? No. Maybe she sometimes uses yours, though. Oh, then for sure it's a sign. It's, it's a, a sign it's, what? It's definitely a sign for you to po propose. For you to propose? Yeah. Because, I mean, if we're sharing a computer, right, mm -hmm. and there's an ad, mm -hmm. that means someone looked it up. 
Uh, Usually, so that okay. means the girl wants to get engaged, and you you're gonna propose later. Yeah, I'm not ready for marriage right now. You're not ready for marriage right now? Nah. Why not? What's damn, wrong? With damn, damn, damn. Nothing's wrong with marriage. Yeah. I when do you think, think you'll be ready? Like when I'm 30. Yeah. yeah. I want to marry late, but I do want to date. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Confession number two. This one's a long one. I hope it's juicy. Are you ready? I unintentionally had my best friend kicked out of school. So one day in school, my best friend and I were just studying for the exam when I told my friend that I'll be using a cheat sheet. She told me to stop because of my good reputation. But I told her that I forgot to study last night because I ate three melatonin gummies and didn't realize that it was way too much for me. So it's time for the exam. Me and my best friend were sitting next to each other and I was just doing my thing sneaking at my cheat sheet and when the cheat sheet fell beside my friend's bag while she was getting something out of her bag one of our classmates shouted oh my god you have a cheat paper while pointing at the what paper kind of, so, what kind of <laughs> classmate is that that's, that's an l classmate that's an l like if <laughs> that's an l classmate that's that's a snitch first of all who even does that if that's not even I don't even think I do that for someone I don't like. I, I don't know. Oh, really, man? No, because <laughs> the whole class suffers. Because e they're going to be on everybody's that ass is from true. now on. That is true. So you actually suffer. You get nothing out of it. The teachers are just going to be more paranoid. And it's not just going to be the teacher that caught it. It's going to be all the teachers. You know they're going to have a fucking administrative teacher Meeting. email chat, you know? And everyone's like, we got to get our shit together. This is what I have found. And then they're going to be like, hell yeah. Let's be dictators. <laughs> These kids up. Uh, that's what's gonna happen. So really, nobody gets anything out of it. Not one person. And she said, our teacher told my best friend to go with her to guidance. And I forgot to tell you, my best friend's reputation is really bad. She's known to be a bad bitch. Well, let's just say teachers didn't really like her. The next thing I know, I was also called into the guidance and I saw the principal standing there and that's when I knew I fucked up. My best friend told them that I was the owner of the paper, knowing my parents will be mad if I told them it wasn't me. No, knowing my parents will be mad, I told them, it wasn't me. Wow. <laughs> wow. Bruh. I will be so mad. And that's your best friend. Mm-hmm. Not anymore. Not any you know what's crazy? We just asked him. We were like, hey, what happens if your best friend fucks your sister? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I don't know why. Literally as I was Like out of randomly, dude. <laughs> And his sister is Jen Jen. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. And his best friend. I'm just kidding. And so we were like, yeah, what happens if your best friend, like your best bud. Oh, we're going to have like a 10 hour sister. talk. 10 hour talk. Yeah. And then he said like, we'll talk it out, you know. Definitely. Definitely sending him to therapy. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what? what? <laughs> yes. Why? He needs therapy for what? Better choices. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. For sure. And then she said, the principal agreed that it wasn't me because I was a great student. My best friend shouted and attacked me. And that's when the principal shouted that she will be kicked out of school. So, um, yeah. Wow. And she got kicked out. <sighs> yeah, this one is, That makes um... me mad. <laughs> what if you say it was your paper? Then you're, you're going to get kicked out. Your parents are going to kill you. Yeah, then it's not my paper. <laughs> <laughs> what is that paper? I don't know what that paper is. <laughs> i never seen that paper before. I'm sorry to this paper. I don't know this I, I'm not ready to die yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I'm getting kicked out of school, yeah. mm -hmm. and I'm gonna die by my parents, I have to do that. Sorry, yeah, I'm ill, yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, I wouldn't, would you not? No. I don't wanna make it seem like I'm like morally above these people, <laughs> these, these crazy people over here. It's mainly because I suck at blatantly lying. I can do white lies, but when I do blatant lies, when I'm looking into the eyes of someone, and it's so obvious that I'm lying. And like, if someone is sitting there and they fucking know the truth, I can't. I can't do it. Like, I can't just sit there and give you a different But you're narrative. gonna get kicked out of school. Yeah. And no. die by your parents. Yeah, and then I think what would happen is like, I'd get kicked out of school, I'd come home and I'd be like, I should have freaking lied. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. I should have freaking lied. And then I'd be like, so upset with myself. So the next story, We'll call her K, and you can call me Sean. We're the same age. We're both Korean, and we're currently 26 years old. Aye. Same bitch. Hello, K. Hello, Sean. So K was my best friend in elementary school and middle school, and we drifted a lot in high school due to her having constantly 
staying at home. Like she was just a person with a really weak immune system. She eventually went back to school consistently in our third year of high school, so junior year. She's feeling a lot better now and just wasn't as sick as often. Junior year was usually filled with a lot of stress and tests because this is when we would take our SAT exams in hopes of making it into a good college. So we got closer again and talked quite often. She often told me that she felt lonely and she found it hard to make and retain friendships with anyone because she was never able to go out since she was so sick all the time. And the some friends that she would make, they would eventually abandon her because she was never able to hang out with them. And we all know how cruel and rude high school cliques can be. So we would start FaceTiming each other every day and sleep at 3 a.m. because we'd be giggling about dumb crushes we had or making up these like what if situations and teasing each other. And I found myself kind of liking her. She was just always there for me when I went through heartbreaks and through my most painful moments. She always knew how to cheer me up. She was also always there to celebrate alongside me during all of my accomplishments. Our relationship was straightforward, but also complicated. She treated me like one of her girlfriends, and she didn't have many, so she trusted me with everything. We stayed close for a long time, even when we went to different colleges. I went to NYU and she went to a community college in Northern California. We were a few thousand miles away. This Yet is like a love story of voting. That's what I'm saying. And I just know it's about to get good because the minute that you said NYU, I was like, give me that storytelling bit. Okay. <laughs> she, and then we were thousands of miles away. Yet we still kept in contact here and there. I still had feelings for her. But I never felt like she felt the same way because she treated me like she did all of her other friends. There was never any special movie movement and I never wanted to get my hopes up just to be disappointed. Mm. I moved on and I focused heavily on my education. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> it's getting a lot. <laughs> I was majoring in business management and she majored in psychology. It felt like our paths we were never gonna cross anytime soon. Then one day, our second year of college, she told me she got a boyfriend and they'd been talking for months now. He was 6'1 and a well-dressed Korean man. The new boyfriend was 6'1? Yes. One? <laughs> okay, listen, I'm not saying you're 6'1, but how fucked up would it be if like one day I get a confession and it has something to do with us, like actually personally to do with us. Cause you know how recently, you know, your dad got into a car accident or something. Someone's like, I, w I got into this car accident. It's like this whole storytelling spiel of how they got into the car. They were getting drunk. Then they got into this accident. And at the end, it was like the car in front of me was, was Mr. Mango Butt's dad and Grandpa Mango. Can you imagine? Mm, I would like freaking part of the die. Story? Yeah, just like, Bruh. I would die. <laughs> I don't know why so I thought awkward. about that. On the 6-1 well-dressed man, I'm like, is it you? I'm just kidding. You are none of those, but that's fine. Uh, how tall are you? I'm 6'3". Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot. So she was ecstatic, and she felt like the happiest she had ever been. And I was happy for her, you know? I felt like after all the hardship she had been through her whole life, she deserved to be happy. It didn't stop the pain from still stinging a bit, and that was when I realized I still had feelings for her. I don't know what was it, I don't know what it was in me. Maybe it was the pre-adult angst, or just heartbrokenness, but I felt so vengeful. Okay, what? that took a turn. I, I felt that. so vengeful. I liked her, and she was so far out of reach. I did not want to see her unhappy, but I felt unhappy. It felt so unfair. So I decided to do something. Something I would somewhat regret, but at the same time, satisfied with. So she has a sister. She has an older sister who's two years older than us, and she was painfully gorgeous. The, the pretty <laughs> jeans must gorgeous. run in their family. We will call her sister, Rai. Rie. Rie. I come back to our hometown in Northern California for the summer, and I reached out to Rie to hang out. We hung out back then, but only when I was with Kay and her sister would be home. We spent a lot of, you know, the summer together now, going to these various music festivals, and we even smoked weed together a couple of times. Kay was aware of this, but she still was on vacation with her boyfriend most of the summer, so she never really said anything. But it was all very PG, and she, Rie, just saw me as this childhood friend. But during the second to last week of summer, before I went back to New York, she had confessed to me that she thought I was very good looking and that we should remain in contact when I left. I agreed! 
I thought she was really pretty and I liked her personality, but I kind of found it fuzzy because whether I actually liked her or did I only convince myself to like her out of vengeance for Kay getting with someone that wasn't me on the last day before I left. I had informed her I did not know when I would come back to the city because flights were expensive and I was broke at the time since I was paying off my student loans by myself. Damn, Sean. And NYU is not cheap. Mm -hmm. She wanted to have sex before I left. Okay, whoa. <laughs> Woo! She wanted to have sex Getting before I left. hot in here. <laughs> and we were both sober, by the way. And it was pretty intense. I felt bad after because at this point in my life, my motives and my feelings were unclear. And I was never the type to be this vindictive person. I left for New York the next morning and we spent quite a bit of time calling each other throughout the fall season. And Kay ended up hitting me up to FaceTime and she asked if I was talking to Rie. I admitted to her that we were indeed talking and had been the entire summer. She seemed a bit apprehensive and distant. I couldn't tell if she was trying to be aggressive or if she just felt like, you know, she changed in general because of her relationship. But I didn't think much of it. I laid in bed one night and I was thinking to myself, did I really just fuck her sister out of spite because I was upset about what happened with my relationship with Kay? I fucked her sister. <laughs> there was no going back from this. And at this point, Kay felt further and further and further away from me. I felt really conflicted, and I didn't know if I wanted to continue pursuing Rie. Did I still have feelings for Kay? It never felt good or right. Then I found out. The dumbest shit I had ever heard, and I couldn't stop laughing. Wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> what does that mean? What's the dumbest shit? Okay, what do you think is happening? Can we take a guess? I have an idea. Oh, Kay doesn't have a boyfriend. Mm hmm Kay's trying to spy him the whole time. Mm hmm What? Trying to get him to do something. Cause you know- But he couldn't stop laughing. He shouldn't be laughing. Because it's almost like, you know how I laugh in really uh, uncomfortable situations? Okay, so maybe he's like, okay, so I still have a chance with Kay. Mm-hmm. So he's laughing like, ha ha ha, I was so no. dumb. I think it's, he has no chance with Kay and he's laughing out of like, this is so fucking dumb. Like I fucked everything up. Uh. I ruined my life and it do. <laughs> At that point, all you can do is laugh because it's so oyopso, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know the English word for it. It just means so ridiculous that all you can do is laugh. Yeah, it's like <laughs> oyopso, right? Well, let's find out. But I did feel bad for her. Rie had told me that during a big wedding on their cousin's side, it was discovered that Kay and her 6'1 huncho, who was her date to the wedding, were related? <laughs> what? Say what now? You are telling me she had been fucking her cousin. <laughs> Yo, can you stay Five away for, for six like six months? Ah! Ah! That makes me like. That makes me want to freaking die. That's so weird. How did they not know that they were related, or did they know that like they were related? Like a distant cousin, maybe. But they didn't know. I'm assuming. Oh, so no. maybe they, drama. Maybe they haven't talked forever. And like forever. K drama, you know? Yeah, like K drama. Always K drama always does something crazy. I, I thought he wasn't fucking existing. Turns out he exists way too close to the family tree. How are they related? Wow. Also, what's up with the K dramas doing that weird shit, bro? I don't, ask the director. Dude, I wonder how she felt I like, would after realizing it. I would. I don't know what I would do. I think I would jump off something. So what if it turned out I'm your cousin, babe? No. Ah! <laughs> disgusting stuff. I can't even look at you. Yo. Thank God you're not even Korean. So what would what would that be? I'm your cousin too. Yeah, we're all cousins. Hey. 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 Like I don't even know if I could ever mentally repair from something like that. Oh, I would man. have to seek therapy. So you think we're gonna break up? Yes, uh, absolutely. But Are you, you kidding me? That's disgusting. But you guys will After still see each other. No, we're done. I would immediately break up with After you. I can't eight do it. Years? Ew, disgusting. Get, okay. After all the thick and through and yeah, thickums no. and skinny what? legends that we went through? No. Damn. Ew, ew, ew. No, just even the thought of it, I can oh. never look at you the same. I can never treat you the same <laughs> if I found out that we are somehow related. I would need hey, to but, cleanse hey, let's my soul. Think, let's talk about it. I think like... Thousands of years ago, we're all related. Come on. True, true. Yeah, but thousands of years ago, it was actually appropriate for kings and queens to just marry each other and sisters and brothers and cousins because they were trying to keep it pure. <laughs> this is disgusting. So what happened? That's that it? No, she had been f***ing her cousin for the last five to six months. Are you serious? 
I thought this was a joke. It was unbelievable and it felt like a movie plot, but it was real, too real. Kay reached out to me heartbroken and I talked her through her sorrows. I felt bad. I fucked her sister and she fucked her own cousin. I guess their genes were too good. I can't believe this happened. And I vowed to take this damn story to the grave. But I saw this opportunity to give you a potential good laugh. So here you go. We're currently living our own lives and I broke things off with Rie. I told Rie the truth wow. and I opened up to her about my confusion and of my intents of getting with her. And she was sad and I knew it wouldn't have ended nicely. But I tried my best but I knew I wouldn't be able to mend the damage in her heart. Dang, bro, what the? It gets juicier and juicier and juicier. I am not close to either Kay or Rie anymore, but I see them on social media making big moves in their career, and from a distance, I'm proud of them. And I hope they'll find happiness in their lives. I made decisions I regret, and I will have to live with this for the rest of my life. Ah! Wait, is, is she still with the cousin though? Oh, that's a plot twist. <laughs> They're married. Plot now. twist. Ah! She's married a cousin. <laughs> ah! That's so disgusting. And what is Zendaya as your cousin? Like, okay, but she's not like a cousin like me. She's my other cousin from my side. So she's oh. my mom's. Oh, that's not that bad. Because ah! <laughs> technically we're not related. Cousin? Hold on, I need to call my sister. She knows shit like this. Hi, I have a quick question, sister. So let's say Dan Dan is dating. Would that be incest or not? No. 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 So we're good. But they're still cousins. But they're still cous like second cousins or something, right? So is that okay? I mean, morally, no. But genetic-wise, yes. Okay, then you're in the clear. No. He's in the clear to date. That's what my sister. <laughs> getting from this okay <laughs> he's in the clear to date my cousin harrison yo i can't though <laughs> all right this is the last story i ended up hooking up with a customer i male was 18 at the time working at home depot and i was still new at the time and this was my first week and i was alone on the floor i worked at the garden department and we were starting to see a bit more customers since spring was right around the corner i was working the early shift 8 till 4 30. usually in the morning we aren't that busy so I was just doing my usual job restocking aisles. That's when I saw this older woman with a black floral sundress in one of the aisles. I approached her and I asked if she needed any help. She said yes and asked how to take care of roses and carnations, which what was the best time to plant them, etc. I helped her pick the dirt that she would need and all of that. This feels very sexual. I don't know why. Like I've been to the garden section at Home Depot and it's not sexual, but the way that you're describing it is so sexual. While I was helping her get the things that she needed that she would need for her garden, we're talking and at first it's pretty basic small talk, but slowly it gets a little more flirtatious. After taking how old, to how old is the woman? An older woman. That's what he said. I don't right. know. After taking to checkout, I asked if she would need help loading all of her items into her car. She said that would be great, and we headed to her car. Once I loaded all the items into her vehicle, I asked to see her receipt. I do the normal, thank you for choosing Home Depot, talk and mention the URL link to our customer survey at the bottom of the receipt. I wrote my name at the end of the receipt so she knew it, and then I say, if you like. I can also write my number just in case you need anything else from me. She and she immediately said no to the phone number, but instead gave me her email. What? Wait, so how old is she? <laughs> Either she doesn't like you or she's really old. <laughs> I thought that this was her way of rejecting me, but I still gave her my email. Later at 4.30, I was checking my phone after work and I noticed I had an email notification. It was from her. I could tell it was from her since her email had her name in it. So the first email that she sent me was a simple, hey, I hope this is blank from Home Depot. I replied back with a picture of me and said, yes, it is me. And I was surprised that she actually sent me an email. Damn, she they're flirting already. Yes, she Jeez, replied back her email. with a picture of herself as well and explained that she didn't want her husband to know about me. <laughs> oh, that went zero to a thousand real fast. I thought she would be like this lonely, uh, maybe a widow, wow. maybe just someone who never got married. But your husband, 
The whole time we talked, sending pics back and forth to one another, our conversations are starting to get more flirtatious. She asked me, when was my next day off? I told her I had Wednesday off, and she was glad that it was during the weekday since no one would be home until the late afternoon. <sighs> we agree to meet up at Starbucks close to our house at 8 a.m. and see how things go from there. Wednesday arrives, and I head to the Starbucks that we agreed to meet at. I sat down at one of the tables with the coffee that I had ordered. A couple minutes go by. I hear an unfamiliar voice ask if the seat next to me was taken. It was her, in this lavender dress. I said no, and she sat down next to me. We talked for a little bit and messed around a little under the table. Wait, 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 what does that mean? No. No way. Honey, can you stop messing with the, the boogie? <laughs> but how's that possible? It's in public, right? I know. People will see. Yeah, Dendan, I know, it's crazy. Unless he's really good with, um... <laughs> no, I'm never gonna do that. Imagine Zendaya wants you to do that. Yo, Tom Holland might wa be watching. <laughs> <laughs> so we messed around a little bit under the table. After we finished our coffee, she asked if I wanted to go back to her place. I say yes, and I follow her to her house, and as soon as we get into her house, we're both all over each other. I won't go into detail, but we did end up in her bed. We kept meeting up for five months until she had a pregnancy scare. Okay, so she's not 60. God, he was 18, so an older woman could be Maybe 25. Maybe 30. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but she took a pregnancy test, and it came positive two weeks later. She went to the doctor. And the doctor told her it was a false positive. Oh. This is when reality hit me, and after that, I had to cut it off. This woman was 45 years old! God dang! <laughs> 18 with a 45, let's go. Okay, yeah. that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. I think yeah. the biggest age gap we know is 20 years. It's almost three decades. Yeah, dang. three decades is a lot. Alright, the next one. <laughs> I my boyfriend's favorite teacher out of spite and got caught. I hope I have your attention. The full story is actually even worse and has several plot twists, but it's kind of long. A four minute read. <laughs> <laughs> I put headers in if you want to skip around. Okay, one, how my ex and I met his teacher. My ex, let's call him Alec, is a musician who idolized this other musician. Let's call him Mickey, the musician. Mm -hmm. In August 2021, Alec and I went to one of Mickey's concerts and happened to run into him right outside the venue. Alec introduced himself and me to Mickey and we talked for a little bit. To be honest, I was, I was feeling Mickey from the very first meeting, but obviously I'm with someone, Alec, right? Anyway, Alec asked Mickey to be his piano teacher slash mentor, and Alec was saying for months how cool it was to meet another Asian jazz pianist in Los Angeles and how much he looked up to him and how great of a mentor he was. Well, that seems like a very small yeah. circle yeah. of people. Listen, so I will Asian be Asian jazz pianist in Los Angeles. Pianist. P pianist. Yeah. yeah, he's the pianoist. <laughs> <laughs> I figure there's probably two of them. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So which one did you fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Have you fucked the other one? Are they good with their hands? Don't answer that. What the heck? Super Have, fast. Have you seen the TikTok no. of the cat going around? Be Charlie Poos, Poos, Poos. You gotta send me that. That was super fast. I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> Not even trolling. So, anyways, chapter two the breakup. Fast forward to October, Alec broke up with me out of nowhere after two years. Even worse, he said he expected me to do it first because he treated me so poorly. So, out of sadness and anger, I jokingly told my friends, I'm gonna fuck Mickey to get back at him. I never thought it would happen because I hadn't seen Mickey since the concert in August. How I reconnected with Mickey four months after the breakup? Guess who likes me on Hinge? This is what I call 
manifestation, you know what I mean? The secret or whatever you call it. Mickey, he remembered me. He asked me if Alec and I had broken up and I said yes. And Mickey prompted, promptly asked me out. Now here's the next plot twist. I baited Mickey into matching with me. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> she, she said, I saw his profile the week before, but I didn't know if he would remember me after one meeting. So I just went and took new photos and set my radius to one mile every time I was in his neighborhood so that I would keep popping up on his hinge stack. Wow. Dang. My first date with Mickey, another big ass plot twist. So we go on our first date and turns out Mickey was absolutely lovely and everything Alec wasn't. Mickey was much more accomplished. He had thousands of followers and Spotify listeners. Mm. He was an actual touring musician. He was taller, had better hair, funnier, more open-minded, manlier. And yes, he had a bigger penis. <laughs> Dang. Okay. So after our date, he invites me back to his house to hang out. No, literally, he was a gentleman. When I walk in, I hear a huge ass gasp. Right in front of me was a man I had matched with me weeks before matching with Mickey. Not only were they roommates, but they were fanmates and best friends too. Wow. Dang. See, this is why people, if you live in LA for too long, they keep telling you LA is small. And you think that it wouldn't feel small because, you know, there's so many people there. It's such a big around, like, space unlike New York. But, you know, when there's only three and Asian jazz pianists and you <laughs> two of them, like, it's going to get small. <laughs> and I say that with love and respect. Like, I am almost jealous. <laughs> uh, <laughs> After seeing the cat thing, I'm actually jealous, okay? So not only were they roommates, but they were best friends. The friend was really awkward about it, but Mickey was cool with it. So Mickey and I, we kept seeing each other and I was spending the night multiple times a week. I had a toothbrush and my favorite shirt at his place. So needless to say, it was going well until we got caught. Chapter, how I knew I was caught. One day, I noticed that two people had unfollowed me on Insta. The first one was Mickey's roommate, who apparently couldn't handle seeing me and Mickey together because he still had feelings for me the week we talked on Hinge. Like the one week that they talked on Hinge. like. Get a grip, bro. Get a grip. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> the other one was Alec, who had not only unfollowed me, but also blocked me and deleted all of our photos. I played dumb and I texted him, hey, I thought we were on good terms. Are you mad at me? And days later, he calls me and cusses me the fuck out for two hours. How Alec found out? He saw my car on his street because plot twist, Mickey and Alec are now neighbors. <coughs> Bro, <coughs> they live like 15 houses apart, which I had known this entire time. <laughs> now I drive uh. a very generic car, like a white Jeep Wrangler. So how did Alec know it was mine? True, you don't know how many white Jeep Wranglers you'll see in LA. It's a bachillion. He memorized my license plate number. I don't even know my own license plate number. What the actual fuck? He said he saw my car in the evening and the next morning and knew that I was having a... You know, it definitely wasn't a girl's sleepover, a little slumber party. So the aftermath. So in this two hour conversation, which I recorded a little well, Alec basically shits on me for dating his piano teacher and said he's devastated that every time he drives by his house, he's gonna <laughs> think of me face down ass up on Mickey's bed. As you fucking should, Alec. As you fucking should. You should be thinking about that just anytime you drive anywhere or just sit there, you eat your breakfast cereal. Just think about it. You dumb bitch. <laughs> Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. We don't like Alec. He was mean. He was freaking rude. He broke up with her and said, I thought you should have broken up with me first because of how poorly I treated you. Mm. Why are you treating people poorly, huh, Alec? And he was also mad at himself because he's the one that introduced us. Now, here's how shitty Alec is. I get blocked, deleted from his Instagram guard, cursed out, yet he still follows Mickey and said nothing to him. Smells like sexism to me, sis. Honestly, I don't mean this in the harsh way because I know you're hot, okay? Face up, ass down, no matter what you're doing, I know you're hot, but maybe Alec wants Mickey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have you thought about that, you know? Maybe another great part was... Exactly, and she's like, then another part. <laughs> <laughs> he also asked me to ask Mickey if he would still give him piano lessons. Alec what? is 
truly trash. He wow. says I ruined his music career by taking away his link to the LA jazz scene, which is kind of true because Mickey shut him out after he yelled at me and realized it was an abusive relationship. Then that's Alex's fault. No, like if you're an abuser, I'm sorry, and people don't want to work with you, that's yeah, not yeah, her yeah. fault. Of course. <laughs> like what the hell? But Mickey wouldn't have cared had Alec not blocked me and cursed me out because now he just looks like this crazy jealous person. I know I seem like I'm not a great person, but my ex was truly terrible to me and you can judge me all you want, but I have never ever been happier or whatever Cassie from Euphoria said. But yeah, me and Mickey are still seeing each other. The end. I'm not even mad about it. Literally not one part. Okay, you know what? The hinge part where you were going into his neighborhood and like setting it to a mile and putting new pictures, I... Some people would call it creepy. I call that getting what you want. I call that getting it done. I call that beating the algorithm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. We don't judge her, do we? Nah. No. What? Hey, she she's had hey, she's happy. Yeah. Then I don't even know why she why she thinks she got caught. Yeah, right? and that's like a thing that people um, actually give advice for. You ever get cheated on? It also applies to guys, mm -hmm. you know. And you really want revenge. Now, I'm not gonna dictate how you live your life. I'm not gonna tell you what to do with your <clears> life. <throat> should you or should you not get revenge? Hey, that's up to you. That's that's your decision, not mine, right? But <laughs> if you want the best revenge, you would think. You know how people say, if he cheats on you, you sleep with one of his best friends. Mm -hmm. They said you. His idol, his like, mentor, his boss, like this but then jazz like, pianist. Then they like Zendaya. Yeah, good luck with that. Best no, no, friends. like a guy that you look up to, you know. I look up to my. Idol. I look up to myself. <laughs> <laughs> so how does that work? It's stupid. <laughs> You're so stupid. <laughs> so uh, if You're I so if stupid. I look up to my dad. <laughs> be it, be it, be it. So let me know in the comments. What are your thoughts on these? This is kind of wild. I like these. I, I feel like, like none of these. Nobody was really that bad. I'm really not mad at anyone. You know, I'm supposed to be mad at you guys, guys. <laughs> guys, guys. I'm supposed to be mad at you guys. Y'all, come on, get it together. Be crazier, go hey, out juicier, there. Get juicier, get juicier. fuck some shit up. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you check out expressvpn.com slash biz, linked in the description. I'll see you guys tomorrow, bye.